Father in heaven, God, we just thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing. Thank you for keeping us for another day, blessing us that our eyes beheld a brand new day. And we know that it was because of your grace and your mercy. So we say thank you. For loving us the way you do. And God, we come asking that as we go through your word on today. That you would speak to us. That you reveal to us through your word the things that we might have and we might need. To help us in our walk of life. I pray, God, that you will use me. I submit my all to you, O oh God, asking that you would have your own way. Have your way in my heart and my mind and through my words that we might see more of you and less of me. And always pray, God, that the words in my mouth, the meditation of my heart, that it is acceptable in your sight. God, to these ministers, to each one of you. Man, I ask if you're in good health and you don't mind standing. Please stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. Man, we're in the book of Ezra. The book of Ezra. And I ask that you will go home and read chapters 5 and 6. Amen. So you can get the entire message. Also, in your quiet time of study, amen, read the book of Haggai, chapter 1, as well as Zechariah, chapter 1, so that you can understand the story on today. Amen. Amen. I'm only going to read verses 1 through 5 of chapter 5. But my entire message covers chapters 5 and 6. All right. All right. All right. Chapter 5, verse 1 reads, When the prophets Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them, then Zerubbabel, the son of Shotiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, arose and began to rebuild the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. At that time, Tatanai, the governor of the province beyond the river, and Shetha Bozenai and their colleagues came to them and spoke to them thus, who issued you a decree to rebuild this temple and to finish this structure? Then we told them accordingly what the names of the men were who were reconstructing this building. But the eye of their God was on the elders of the Jews, and they did not stop them until a report could come from to Darius, and then a written reply be returned concerning it. And those five verses sets the scene of chapters 5 and six. All right, man. All right. and my subject though comes from chapter two, the first part of it, when it says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shatil, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, arose and began to rebuild the house of God, right. which is in Jerusalem. My thought for today is picking up where you left off. Picking up where you left off. Good good We continue in this series outlining the steps to restoration. As we discussed on last week that on this journey, the one thing that we have to understand is when you are trying to grow higher in God, you have to beware because there will be some enemy invasions. 
because our enemy is so crafty that, that he has a pattern of adversarial attacks no. that he will use just to deter us. And in that message, we found three ways that the enemy will attack us. The first way we found out is he has a way of infiltrating what we have, what we have yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that the enemy, the devil, is so crafty that, that he will do all he can mm -hmm. just to break in yes. and disrupt what you have going on. Yes. Right. That he will appear to you as a friend, as yes, someone that, that has your best interests in mind. Yeah. But he has his own motives. Right. He has his own thoughts and actions of what he's going to do. And the message for us is that we have to beware of wolves in sheep clothing. Be be because you can rest assured that when you make up your mind that I'm going to be committed to God and I have my circle of people that are on this walk with me, the enemy will do all he can just to come in. One way that he has is he will come in and try to infiltrate uh -huh. yeah, yeah. to disrupt what God is trying to do in our lives. The second thing we learned is that if he cannot infiltrate you, he will find a way to frustrate you. That, 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 that he will strategically put people in your life that only has one purpose and that is to frustrate you. And, and they will do all they can to bother you, to be a pest, just to nag you in order to get you frustrated. Because the devil and the enemy knows that once you are frustrated, you will quit. So in order, in order to, to get us to quit, he will try his best to frustrate us. Yes, and, and if you are someone that is not strong in your walk with God, yes, if you lack commitment along yes, the way, when frustration sets in, yes, you will quit. Yes, right. 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 So he has a way of coming in by frustrating us. Yes, and the last way we learned is that, that he has another way of, of attacking us and that is bringing up accusations. Right. Right. Right against you. Uh -huh. that, 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 that our enemy is so crafty that he can come up with lies, rumors, and gossip uh -huh. to come in and make you quit. Yeah, yeah. A lot of work for God has not been completed because the people of God have become frustrated by accusations. The accusations have taking control yes, and yes. you have gotten to the point to where you say I don't want to deal with it anymore yes sir so 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 the encouragement for us in that message is no matter what comes your way the enemy can't stop God's plan I, I don't care how hard he tries I don't care what he comes up with he cannot stop God's plan. Yes, yes, but, but, but when you get to chapter 5 yeah. and chapter 6, yeah. you will see that somewhere they stop working. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I, I struggled with this sermon because it contradicts what I said last week. All right. All right. That, 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 you can, that, that the enemy cannot stop God's plan. Right, right, right. But but when I study the text, I, I see that for 15 years, the plan stopped. And I, I, I struggle because I said, now nah, I can't go back and tell them that the plan didn't stop. Because the plan did stop. But this is why you have to be a student of the text. So that you can understand. When you look at chapter 4, you will see that in his response, King Artaxerxes told them, don't you do anything else until I give you another order. Okay. So, so well, there, the, the, the plan had not stopped. Stop. I got you. It just paused. Okay. Right. Because we, we can only imply somewhere between chapter 4 and chapter 5, he sent them a letter saying they can get back to work. Which tells us that now the enemy can't stop God's plan, but you sure can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
You, 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 you can decide to just sit on the bench and say, I don't want to work no more. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. That, 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 that's, that's, that's what I see in the text. Uh -huh. that's right. Be because the text says when you get to chapter 5, uh -huh. God once again had to stir him up yeah, yeah. to get back to work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boy, I wish y'all come to Bible study where you can have some fun with this sermon like, like, like I do. You, you, you have to understand these are a group of people that left Babylon uh -huh. excited. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. We, we're excited because we're going back to rebuild the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you look at the text, you see that they had already restructured worship. Uh -huh. So now we're worshiping God the way we ought to worship. Yeah. 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 We are so excited, we done laid the foundation to the temple. Uh -huh. Everything is going good. We start to praise God. Our enemies come in and stop us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And when the, oh. when the message came back that you can get back to work, they said no. Uh -huh. They said no. Now they are in a state to where their hope is dim. We, 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 we just don't have the power to complete the job. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we started out good. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because of all of this, yeah, yeah. we just said we don't want to do it yeah. anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sound like some of us in here, right? Amen. That, 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 that we started out on 2020 with the mindset that I'm going to renew, rebuild, and restore. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But some, something happened between January 1 and February 1. And some of you just quit. I know, I know I'm right because one thing that we, we as human beings love is we love to take a break. We, 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 we love to just chill out for a little while. Sit back and let my hat out. Enjoy my own life. This, this, this is what they were doing because when they told them to stop, they started worrying about themselves. When you start reading the book of Haggai, you'll see they start building their own houses, taking care of their own land, cultivating their own harvest. They weren't worried about the house of the Lord. They were worried about themselves. Just like many of us, when it comes to the work of God, we have a way of just slowing down, not worrying about the house of God. Oh, but I bet if we take a trip to your house, I, I bet all of your bills are paid. I bet your refrigerator is full. I bet you got gas in your car. New clothes in the closet, more expensive clothes. But when it comes to the house of God, we don't want to give. We, 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 we put it on the back burner. We, we, we stop working when it comes to God. You get up every Monday through Friday, make your way to your place of employment, and you put in work. But you can't get up on a Sunday, make your way to God's house, and put in work. All you got to do is say, ouch. You ain't got to say amen. Because I know I'm preaching this thing in the text. This, this, is, this, is, this is what happened to, to the Jews. They, were, they, were, they started out well. But because of what had happened, they stopped. They, they, they stopped. The saying goes that, that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And that, that, that just said that when the situation becomes difficult, the strong ones will work harder to meet the challenge. But the truth is, when it comes to God, the going, the going doesn't always get tough, and the tough doesn't always get going. Because when the going gets tough, we lead the church. We leave the work of God where is it for somebody else to do it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I know I'm on it. And the problem, the problem with many of us is we, we have quit so many things so many times to where quitting has just become the norm for us. Quitting, quitting is just who we are. Whenever it gets difficult, we quit. When it gets complicated, we quit. When, 
When it don't go our way, we quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And that's what the text teaches us on yes, today. Yeah, yeah. That that no matter how difficult this road gets, uh -huh. yes, sir. we cannot quit. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Right. And all, all this message is doing is calling and talking to us that have sat on the bench uh -huh. to tell us that you have sat down too long. And now it's time to get up and get back in the game. That's, that, that's, that's all it's saying. That, 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 that if you want to renew your commitment, uh -huh. you got to get back in the game. Yes, if you want to restore the broken relationship between you and God, you got to get back in the game. Yes, if you want to see God do exceedingly abundantly above all, you got to get off the bench yes, and get back in the game. Yes, yes, you got to keep keep on working towards your goal, working towards. The things that God yes, has. Yes, yes, yes. The question comes, Reverend, how, how can I pick up where I left off? Yeah. Hey, Pastor, speak some, some of us have been speak that way for so long, and we don't know how yes, sir. to recharge yeah. our battery. Yeah. 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 Some, of us, some of us is an old parked car yeah. that's been on the side of the road for 20 years. Yes, <laughs> Hadn't changed the battery, the wires, or nothing. Yes, and getting in there trying to start it up. And all you're getting is backfire. <laughs> and the question is, how can I? How can I stop? Three things I want to show you from this text. First of all, you can't be distracted by your obstacles. When I look at the first couple of verses, the Lord had to stir up some people to encourage the Jews to get back to work. They, they had been distracted from their task. Uh -huh. yes, All that, that they had set out to do, they had been distracted from it, and, and they allowed it to move them away from what God was trying to accomplish yeah. mm -hmm. through them. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. And I just want to let you know that the enemy has a way uh -huh. of throwing distractions in our life yes. to keep us yes. Yes. from doing what God wants us to do. Yes. And that's something that all of us in here need to know because many times when we face obstacles in our life, we feel like we are headed in the wrong direction. Yeah. But, but now there are times that the reason certain obstacles are in your way is because you are doing right by God. And you, you, you cannot allow these obstacles to force you to give up. You have to continue to keep on because one thing that I've discovered is that God has the ability to take all of our obstacles and make them as an opportunity for us to see him show up in the midst of our circumstances and change what we see. God has a way of taking them same obstacles, them same hurdles, them same barriers, them same mountains that you had to climb. And God has a way of showing you that when you can't do for yourself, I can come in and enable you to get through that. The Jews needed some extra help because they felt like we can't do this anymore. So God had to stir up some preachers to go let them know that I'm still right there with you. And you, you have to see this because when you look at the life and the history of the Jews, uh -huh. time after time, they faced an obstacle. Yes, yes, when they got out of Egypt, yes, they faced an obstacle. Yes, when they crossed over the Red Sea, yes, they faced another obstacle. Yes, when they got to the Jordan River, yes, they faced another obstacle. Yes, and every time they faced an obstacle, God showed up just to let them know that he was in total control. And I know I got some folk in here saying, the same way God worked through Israel, he's doing the same thing for me right now. Because oh, when I look at my life, I see where God has showed up every single time and moved some stuff out of my way. When I look at my life, I see how God has dealt with my enemies. God has answered my prayers. God has moved mountains out of my way. And all the Lord is saying to us today is don't worry about what's in the way. You just keep your focus on the task at hand. Because one thing 
I know is that when God throws circumstances in your way, yeah. the depth of the circumstances is only an indication of where God is about to take you. Yeah. In other words, that setup ain't nothing but an opportunity for a come up later on in your life. And, and that means that whatever is happening to you right now is just a part of God's plan to get you to be where he wants you to be. And the reason you're at a low point in your life, the reason your life ain't going the way it ought to be going, the reason you're crying all night long is because God is working on your behalf to see the things that he has already had in store for us. And, and all, all we got to do is just keep trusting God because God is asking us today, is, do you have the endurance to keep on fighting in the midst of adversity? Do you have the endurance to keep on building when they say stop? Do you have the endurance to keep on working when no nobody want to work with you? Do you have the endurance to keep on praying when you're praying by yourself? Do you have the endurance to keep on trusting God when your world is all crumbling down? God just want to know, do I have the right folk on my side that will continue to work in spite of what they see? That, that, that's, that's all That's all he want to know. And God looking for some folk right now that have that mentality to say, I don't care what comes in my life. I'm going to keep on working for God. I, I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep building. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep thinking. I'm going to keep moving because I'm trying to be where God wants me to be. Yes, sir. You, got, you got to have the mentality that I'm going to stay committed to the task. I don't care what comes my way in my life. It, it may be tougher than you thought it was, but you got to keep, keep on trusting. You got to stay committed to the task. It, it may hurt more than you expect it to hurt, but you got to stay committed to the task. You may not even be the first one to cross the line, but you got to stay committed to the task because one thing I know is I, don't, I can't speak for you, but I'm not going to allow my distractions my obstacles uh -huh. to hold me back from being where God wants me to be and, and as we as we as we go through this period of restoration yeah, the word for us is don't allow those obstacles to stand in your way no 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 don't don't allow a hurdle to stop you from keep climbing don't don't, don't allow a valley to think you can't go through it don't, don't allow a mountain to think you can't go around it God has a way of getting you through that you just have to stay committed you gotta stay committed to the task. Yes, yes, the second thing is you 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 can't you can't be discouraged. You can't be yes, discouraged by your opposition. Yes, Just because you start back to work, don't mean opposition gonna leave you alone. Just because you have made up your mind that I'm gonna keep moving this time, does not mean that the Satan won't send some folk. Amen. Your way again. Just, just because you 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 defeated Satan the first time, doesn't mean he gonna leave you alone. Because he always leaves you for a season. He always leave you for a season. And during a season when Satan left. They start working about themselves yeah, yeah. and forgetting about God. Yeah. And the question that you need to ask yourself yeah. is in your season when Satan has left you alone, yeah. uh -huh. what are you doing for God? But we can't be we can't be discouraged yeah. by our opposition. Yes, sir. When the Jews started rebuilding, uh -huh. the text says in verse 3 and 4 that Tatanite. Yeah. And some of his brother, his posse, yeah, 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 came around, yeah. and they wanted to be nosy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They want, they were curious. Uh huh. Who you working for? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Who, 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 who told you that you can rebuild? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and can I stop and let you know that when you working for the Lord, uh -huh. that you got a bunch of folk that want to be nosy? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They, they just they just they just knows it when 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 you are trusting God in your circumstances you got nosy folk that just want to see how is it that you making it 
when your world crumbling down. You, when, when, when you come to work smiling and, and, and your life is all messed up, you, you got nosy folk just want to know how is it that you can smile in the midst of it. You just got to let them know that when you work for the Lord, he, he, he has a way of blessing you in the midst of what you have. Yes, uh, yeah, they, 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 these folk were so nosy. Uh -huh. They were doing their job on one hand, yeah. but they were being nosy on the other. On the other. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And their nosiness turned into snitching. <laughs> You'll see that they wrote a letter to the king. Yeah. 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 And they were telling the king, I got some folk down here that's doing some stuff. I think you just need to know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These Jews down here, they rebuilding yeah. this temple. Yeah. And they, they using some big old bricks. Yeah. And they using some wood. In, in their mind, they are building a fortress down here. Yeah. And, and you just got to know what's going on. Yeah. That, 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 that's in your text. Yeah. Yeah. And the king responded to them yeah. in a way that you would not have thought of. Yeah. Yeah. In response to their snitching, <laughs> the king turned the table. And the king told them that since you want to snitch, that's the Lucius Davis version, since you want to snitch, I want you to help them. Whatever they need, you give it to them. Matter of fact, if they need some money, you give it to them. Yeah. Don't delay it. Yeah. You give it to them as soon as they have requested and asked for. Yeah. If they need animals, yeah. give it to them. Yeah. But then this is what gets me. The king says, if any one of you disobey me, yeah. Yeah. you're going to be executed. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, not just you, but then we're going to destroy your whole house. Yeah. Y'all ain't get it. Y'all ain't get it. When you snitch on God, folk, God has a way of turning that stuff all back around to attack you. And y'all know the common phrase today is yeah? snitches get snitched. And, 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 and all, all, all that happened to them is God said, you get out of their way and you let them be. And we have to understand that, that the reason many of us are so defeated in life is because we allow our enemies to turn us around. And the shock for us today is although God may not move your opposition, God has a way of taking a bite out of it. And that's encouraging to let you know that they can snap, they can growl, they can attack, but they can't do you no harm. And I don't know about you, but that's good news for me. To let me know that when I start to do new for God, I know my enemy is going to come, but they can't do nothing to me. They, they can't harm me. They can't bother me. They can't fester me. Because God has a way of taking a bite out of me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that's encouraging right there. Because that, that, that lets us know. That, 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 that when we yeah. look at life, yeah, yeah. some of us are wondering every single day, why is it that I have so many people attacking me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why, why I got folk hating me on my job? I got folk hating me in my family, hating me in my community. You even got folk hating you here in the church. God told me to tell you on today that he ain't moving them out of your way. He just want to prove to you what it means when he say how he can take was meant for your bad and turned around for your good. The, the reason God have not moved them hateful folk out your life because he wants you to know that he mean in his word when he say no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The reason God let them hell you stay around in your life cause you hell day after day is because God want to let you know how he can prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. I don't know about you, but when God starts to put a table in front of my enemies, I just want to sit at the table and enjoy what God has for me. 
And if God has joy at the table, right in the face of your enemies, you can have joy on your face. If it's hope on the table, right in front of your enemies, you can have hope in their face. Yes, sir. God, God will let you know that he can make your enemies your footstool. That, that, that's what the text shows us. That, 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 that when you want to grow higher in God, all you got to do is pray that he send you some enemies your way. Because after a while, the more enemies you have, the higher you're going to get. And that's why David says, in the time of trouble, he going to set me upon a rock. And then shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. So come on with all of my enemies. Come on with your hate. Come on with your nasty words. God is going to turn all of that stuff around for my good. He just has a way of, of, of help telling your enemies, you go help them. God, God has a way of making it to where the only person you can call is your enemy. And your enemy can't do nothing but help you. Although they don't want to, they can't do nothing but help you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I told him this in Bible study. You ain't got to go tell nobody what's good you're doing. Your enemy's going to do that for you. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't got to go tell nobody what I'm doing over at Christian Home. No, because your haters going to do that for you. And, and, and the good thing about it is it don't matter how much hate they spread. It's going to touch somebody else that's going to say, boy, they doing some good work over there. Yes, sir. I know, I know I'm right on that. So, so, so I, I invite my haters. I invite the people that don't like me. I invite the ones that talk about me because all you're doing is helping God's work get done. Yes, uh, you, you helping God's work. Get, matter of fact, you are the one that's planting the seed. And when you plant the seed, somebody else going to come by and water it. Oh, when God gets ready, he going to get increased. So, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on! Don't, 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 don't be, don't be distracted by your opposition, because God, God has a way of working that stuff out for your good. That's up, that's up. Then this is the last one. This is the last one. That when, when God blesses you, when, when, when you have started the work again. Yeah. And you have completed uh -huh. the task. Uh -huh. Don't omit being obedient to God. All right. All right. All right. All right. After they completed the temple. Yeah. The text says they recommitted themselves unto God. They started offering sacrifices. Yeah. They, they, in God's house, they started worshiping uh -huh. God. Uh -huh. And in the middle of their worship, yeah. they started a celebration. Uh -huh. when, when God gives you the, the opportunity to finish the task, uh -huh. and, and he has helped you make it from one point to the next, yeah. Yeah. when you come to his house. Uh -huh. Don't forget about That's right. who got you there. That's right. That's right. That's right. When, when, when you can look back over your life yeah. and see that it was only God that made me, help me get from point A yeah. to point B. Yeah. I may have slipped up between A and B, yeah. but God gave me the strength to keep going. Yeah. I may have fell off by the wayside. Yeah between A and B, yes, but God encouraged me to keep moving. Yes, I may have been distracted yes, between yes, A and B, yes, but God stirred me up on the inside yes, and I completed the task. Yes, when you complete the task, yes, you ought to come to God's house yes, with some type of praise yes, on your lips. Yes, 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 when, when you complete what God has done, yes, sir. out of humble submission and obedience to God, you ought to come in here praising yes. 
God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that go my favorite phrase. This is why I say there should never be a dull moment in church. Yes, sir. Because truth be told, when you look at your life from when you were born up until now, somewhere you fell off by the wayside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I ain't the only sinner in here, but but somewhere you backslid. Somewhere you turned away from God. Somewhere you didn't trust God. Somewhere down the line you forgot about God. But in between all of that, God stirred you up on the inside. Brought you back to his house. And we come here and sit here and act, act like we ain't got nothing to praise God for. When I look at the text, they got excited that they, the house is built now. It, it took us 21 years, but the house is built now. And since the house is built, we just want to thank God for all that he has done. And I, I think this is why so many of us join in on the celebration. Because we know that when we look at our life, if it had not been for God on our side, somewhere down the line, things will be different in our life right now. Had God not been working on my behalf, I wouldn't be standing here on today. Had, had God not been working on my behalf, I would not be alive on today. Had God not been working on my behalf, I wouldn't have the frame of mind I have today. Had, had God not been working on my behalf, I would not have the family I have. I would not have the job I have. I would not have the peace I have. But since God did work on my behalf, and I have been completing the task. When I come to his house, I have no choice but to offer praises up to God. Yeah. Yeah, because one thing that I have learned so far is that serving the Lord will pay off. Yeah. It, 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 it may take a little while, but, but it's going to pay off. It, it may be painful, but it's going to pay off. It may be uncomfortable at times. But it's sure enough going to pay off. Because one thing I know is that if God is on your side, everything else will be all right. So you got to come off in here and you got to praise God. I want to encourage y'all that if you have forgotten about praising God, I encourage you that this is your day to go ahead and offer praises unto God. Matter of fact, for, you, for those of you that fasted for three weeks, three weeks you have been tempted. Yeah. Three weeks you have been tried. Yeah. Three weeks you have been struggling. Yeah. But you have completed the task. Yeah. And I don't see why you ain't excited about God yeah. keeping you for three weeks. Yeah. I didn't have no food at time. Oh, but God kept me. Yeah. Oh, hunger started hitting me, but God kept me. Yeah. My temptations were there, but God kept me. Yeah. And I want to thank God that I completed the task. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then some of y'all. Some of y'all been sitting there, you didn't fast and you ain't do nothing. But oh, when you look back over your life, I know that you can say for yourself that God has been good to me. God has kept me. Matter of fact, for some of y'all, it may have been 15 years ago. But that was still a miracle God performed in your life. For some of y'all, probably about 10 years ago, but God still helped you out. It may have been five years for some of you. Matter of fact, some of y'all, God has worked something miraculous in your life this past week. And I know you forgot about praising. You just took it for granted. Went home. Well, now is the time for you to thank God for completing the task. Don't you know that this Sunday is the first day of the week? That means you completed one week. I'm excited that God helped me. Strengthen me that I can get through one whole week. Seven days of hell. Seven days of trials. Seven days of tribulations. Seven days of being talked about. Seven days of not feeling good. And God kept me. And here it is on the first day of the week. I can look back and thank God for what he has done. I, I, I can thank him. I can thank him. And, 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 and that, that encourages us to pick up where you left off. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what you have done. Once you start to work the right way for God, when you complete that task, don't forget to come in here and praise God. When, when, when you complete what God has done, you get in here Yes, and you praise Lord. 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 When you look at that text, I don't know if Tatanai and his group was around them when they got the temple built. But I know that had they been there, 
they saw them praising God. And in their praise, what gets me is they also praise God for their sins. It says that they offer the praise a sin offering to God. They acknowledge that they sin. And they wanted God to forgive them. And don't you know that in your praise to God, it ain't always got to be thank you. Yes, it can be Lord I know that I'm a sinner I know that I'm a wretch but that's where mercy comes from and when I come into his house I can look at my sin and I can thank God for mercy that my sin said that I should have been dead but you held back what I should have got and when I come in your house, I just thank you for mercy. Yeah. Scripture says they are new every day. Brand new mercies I see. Every day I wake up, God is giving me some new mercy. And every day God pardons all of my sins. And every day God relieves me from my sins. And when I wake up, I just want to thank God for, for mercy. Mercy. Think about how much you sinned just on yesterday. And God allowed you to wake up today. Matter of fact, think about how you sin on today. We ain't number 12 hours into the day. And don't you know your, you sin in your mind? And some of y'all have thought some evil stuff. And God did not take you out just yet. That, that, that's praise right there for mercy. In all of that. God, God keeps us. And when when you when you finish the task, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be obedient to God. And how you be obedient to God? He said that we ought to worship him. Yes, sir. In spirit and in truth. Yes, sir. And if you ain't worshiping God in spirit, and the show ain't in truth, then you being disobedient. So, yes. so when yes. we when we renew, yes, sir. we have to make sure uh -huh. that, that we do not forget about mm. being obedient yes. Yes. to God. Yes. Yes. Because obedience is what getting us here. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you have to be obedient yes. to God. Yes. There's one here on today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.